18 Central Texas teams remain alive. The area round of the Texas State playoffs kicks off Thursday night. Dave Bear here with Rick Cantu and Danny Davis as always. Can't get to all 18 teams that are alive, but we will, as always, highlight four of the best games around the area. And guys, let's start it off. Uh, Friday night, a private school matchup in House Park, Regents Hyde Park, a, a rematch of a game earlier this season that went to overtime. Danny, let's start with you. Who do you like in this game and why? I went, with Re Re I went with Hyde Park the first time they played. I'm going to go with the Regents this time. I just like uh, that offense. Grant Brown, leading passer in the Austin area, 3,500 yards, 40 touchdowns. You can't uh, overlook the guys he's throwing to, McCade Rice, Will, Will Zudek, who's also rushing the ball for them, 10 rushing touchdowns this year. I just think that's a lot of offensive firepower, and he you know, went to overtime last time. I think it's going to be close again, but I think Regents is going to get the win this time. Hyde Park proved you right the first time. We'll see if Regents uh, will do it this time. Rick, who are you taking? Well, I picked Regents the first time, and that's the reason that I'm going to pick Hyde Park. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are flip-flopping. I tell you what, you're talking about flip-flopping. These are two totally, totally different teams. Danny mentioned 40 touchdowns, Grant Brown. Hyde Park this year has thrown a total of one touchdown pass. The difference I think in this game is that Hyde Park has a better defense. Six out of their 11 opponents this year have scored 10 points or fewer. It's gonna be another great game. I just see Hyde Park with the defense just a little bit better. Okay, Rick, we'll stay with you. The other game stay, uh, playing in Austin Friday night, Rouse, Hayes, 730, Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex. Who do you see in this one? Well, this is one of those pick'em games, I think, but I'm going to go with Rouse. They have fantastic fans, by the way, and they're going to crowd that place. Rouse is just one of those teams that they, they did well in the playoffs last year. Billy Ray McCrary has done well in his comeback as, as a quarterback. Hayes as a quarterback, Jeffrey Jordan, who averages 150 yards passing. He's thrown 15 touchdowns. And they're sort of the unknown. They're out there, they win almost every game, they won their district. I just think Rouse is battle tested this round. I'm gonna pick that. Okay, and Danny? Um, and Rouse actually beat Hayes earlier this year, 29 to 20. I'm, I'm gonna go with Hayes this game. They've uh, won six straight games since the uh, loss to Tyvee midway through their district schedule. Um, averaging 36 and a half points per game during that winning streak. So I think their offense is clicking right now with Jeffrey Jordan, Luke Park, who's a uh, their leading receiver also can run the ball a little bit for them. And, you know, Hayes, the last two years, have lost, has lost to a District 25-4A team in this round. Cedar Park two years ago, Leander last year. I think it's finally time for them to finally take that next step and get to the third round of the playoffs. All right, moving right along. Elgin and the Simmons brothers taking on Crosby at 7.30 Friday night at Bauer Stadium in Huntsville. Danny, I'll stay with you. Do you like the Simmons brothers to move on? This is going to be a fun game. If you don't have a game to go to and you you, you can expense some mileage, I, I get up to Huntsville for this game. Um, you know, the Simmons brothers, 61 touchdowns between the two of them um, as far as passing, throwing, receiving the ball. But um, don't overlook Crosby. The Walter brothers, um, Ashton and Austin, uh, both committed to Rice, their quarterback running back duo over there. They've combined for 70 touchdowns, so a lot of talent. Um, Crosby also has a guy named Ray, Raylan Singleton uh, going to Utah. Uh, he's caught 26 footballs this year, 15 have been for touchdowns. So a lot of offensive talent. I'm going to go with Elgin just for the fact that their defense has been great this entire season. Only one team, that team is Maynard, has scored more than 14 points against them this season. So that defense, well not, they don't have a lot of depth on the defense. They have a lot of talent and the kids that they have out there have been playing lights out. So I'm going to go with Elgin. All right, Rick, what do you think? Well, Danny mentioned uh, Elgin's defense. Seven out of 11 opponents have scored fewer than 10 points. I believe that's going to be the biggest difference in this game. Crosby, they average 54 points a game. That's great until you consider Elgin scores 50. Uh, the biggest difference is Crosby allows 24 points a game. So big, big disparity. I'm going with the undefeated team, and that would be the Elgin Wildcats. All right, and our final game on the slate, Lake Travis versus Humble Atascacita. That game is Saturday, 7.30, out in Bryan at Merrill Green Stadium. Rick, let's stay with you. How do you like this one? Well, obviously, Atascacita is good in that they're 10-1. and one. I just don't know how good they are because they don't dominate anybody. They average about 35 points a game, but they give up 23. Lake Travis, they've been just rolling over people, the teams that they, they have beaten. Tyler Payne has turned out to be a fantastic wide receiver. He's got 10 touchdown receptions on only 31 catches, so he's kind of a big play guy. Yeah. The difference in this game, I think, is going to be the Lake Travis defense. 
All right, Danny. Uh, Metascasita, they're going to be led by Greg Campbell, their quarterback. He's thrown for about 2,200 yards, rushed for 1,100 yards, but it's like Travis' defense is good. And last week against Bear Finnemore, Westbrook quarterback going to uh, Houston, held him to 28 passing yards. The defense had uh, 12 sacks, sophomore Tevin Paul had four of them. So they can do that to a quarterback who's established and going you know, to play college football. I, I, I don't have much hope for the humble team. I think like Travis is going to win this one pretty easily. Uh, you don't, we haven't even mentioned Sean Nixon, and um, we've talked enough about him this year. So I think Lake Travis moves on. I think they established last week that they're back, and I think they're going to do fine on, on Saturday. All right, that's going to do it for us. Make sure you check out statesman.com at the end of the weekend to see which of the 18 Central Texas teams are still alive when the area round of the playoffs comes to a close. We'll see ya.